It's time for the MCTS Experience with Mr. Orr and Mr. Nash. Discover your passion and unlock your future. All right. Welcome, everybody. Mr. Nash, um, I'm very excited to come back to the MCTS Experience. The December episode, sir, is a full episode. We've got Meaty. all kinds of Meaty, meaty, meaty lot, juicy. Sink your teeth into it. A lot of content. A lot yes. of content. Like a perfect hamburger, mm. um, with lots of fixins. All right. Dude, why gotta, do you always got to go for the food with me, or if you're killing me, you're killing me. <laughs> we got a student of the week. We have a great teacher tip that I'm very excited about. Featured guests. Lots mm. of delights coming at you. A um, couple quick announcements before we get underway. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining us for the MCTS experience. I wanted mm-hmm. to uh, – first reminder, and this is this is a very exciting one that I like to say, but reminder um, that we have this January 19th date coming down the pike, and it's exciting. Uh, we are very, very optimistic. Now, obviously, little asterisks here. With you know, Everything depends on the way the world and what happens mm-hmm. with cases coming up over the next weeks. But right now, we are we – are, optimistic and hopeful uh, for a January 19th return to hybrid learning, hands-on instruction, getting our faces in front of the kids' faces and, and right back in. Right back in. We're excited. Can't, can't All wait. Right? What else, can't Nash? Wait. Well, I mean, obviously, it's, it's December, and we know that holiday break's coming up, and our first official start day, just a friendly reminder to students, parents, uh, anybody listening, guidance counselors, et cetera, is our first official day is December 24th. We'll have classes on the 23rd, December 24th, Christmas Eve, and then we return on January 4th uh, back in the hopper, ready to go. Exciting. 2021, yes. 2021. Uh, it's going to be a better year. Lord knows it's going to be a better year. <laughs> Not to be. Yes, absolutely. We're keeping that positive spirit going. Um uh, STEM, next announcement, STEM and Health Science Academy testing. So if you're an eighth grader or the parent of an eighth grader, um, please just keep keep your eyeballs on your emails, okay? We will be getting word out about that um, shortly after the break uh, about exact dates and how we're going to make that testing happen. Um, so just keep following your emails for STEM and HSA testing. Um, something from Skills USA, Mr. Nash. Tell us about that. I, I, well, I mean, Skills USA legacy has been a part of, of something at MCTS for 50 years, and I'm p- really pleased to report to everybody listening. Uh, I'm going to be doing a presentation at our staff faculty meeting in January about skills and what that's going to look like. Uh, we're definitely doing, going to do local contests on some, some level. There will be limited state contests, and nationals will occur, except remotely. Nationals will be remotely, but you know what? Something's better than nothing. Last year we had nothing, and this year we're, we're moving the ball down the field. And I'm, I'm, what that exactly looks like, I'm still gaining information, but I just, again, I'm shooting a flare gun up of optimism because I received a green light from skills that w- w- teachers will be able to hold locals on whatever capacity they're capable of doing safely and within the guidelines. Uh, definitely going to be state contests, observing social media, or observing um, the proper guidelines, not social media. Social media will be a part of it. Social distancing. Social distancing. Thank you <laughs> for that lifeline, Orf. And um, <laughs> and nationals will occur, which would be a great thing for, even if it's remotely, it's still an amazing experience to be a part of, and we're going to work hard to do that. So No matter what, it's still a great opportunity for our students to demonstrate their skills and all that they're learning. So I love it. We love Skills USA. It's huge. Um, last but not least, this is this is my this is very very exciting. Uh, I want to offer on behalf of the MCTS experience and our whole school, and I'm saving the best for last here, Nash. Uh, mm-hmm. A big big huge congratulations to um, oh, first two teachers of the year, uh, Assam Pink Center. Take it away, Nash. You know who it is. We love him. The big. Oh, my God. Do you throw me? He's a dual agent, Orf. He's I, a double agent. He's not just Assam Pink. You're right. Listen, I, I paused for effect. It's the big ragu, Joe Ragusa, and we love biology teacher. Biology love teacher. by all. Uh, a lion's share of time anchored at the Assam Pink Center, but still gets on that 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 shuttle and comes on up to Sipec and, and nails it. So the we have a monorail that runs between the two. Monorail. Buildings. We got a monorail. Just like the monorail. 
<laughs> yeah, he teaches in both buildings and does an outstanding job. We're we're really lucky to have him on on both teams uh, working with our students. Um, next, um, Mr. Kovitz uh, from the STEM Academy, uh, Teacher of the Year for the CIPEC Center specifically. So mm. so Ragusa uh, Asimpink. Wearing that title, even though he works in both buildings, Kovitz Cypex Center uh, Teacher of the Year, and once again, just a great, great teacher. Outstanding work with the students, hands-on learning in this environment, and when we're in person, we love him. We're very, very happy to have him. Um, next, uh, the Educational Services Professional of the Year. Oh yeah. For the Aspen Pink Center, first we go alphabetically. Here um, is beloved uh, uh, hometown favorite Lisa Rubino, and everybody knows Ms. Rubino. She's she's been in the district um, for for years and and loved by students and teachers. money outstanding, uh, uh, an anchor amongst many programs at Aspen Pink. Just really allowing the teachers to un unlock their true potential by supporting yes. them. She's got that. She's a teacher too. You know, she's 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 certified yeah, to teach. She's, she's certified. incredible, and she jumps and, in uh, wherever you need her. Right? Yeah, uh, home run. Yeah, we love her. Um, and now, last but certainly not least, the education services professional for the Arthur R. Cypex Center for this year <laughs> is our very own Nick MacGyver Sikowski. Producer Nick, <laughs> total win. Dude, total win. Get on that mic. Say a few words. We're we're so excited. Everybody doesn't know you. We know and love you. We know and love you, and and the world should. He does so much Nash behind oh. the scenes that people don't even know. Like, you know, we're over here. Oh, look at this! Look at this great thing that I did, and all oh, this teacher did this, and this student did this, and MacGyver's back there, like like the like the Godfather holding the marionette strings, making Dude, everything glue. work. He's the glue that holds yeah. it all together. Nick, what's it like to once attend the school and now you're receiving an award like this? Well, attending the school from the beginning uh, back in 2008 when I graduated um, was just the stepping stone for where I'm at now. So it was great for then and, and now. And with it being difficult times, it's been times where technology has shined and it's helped grow what I can do for the for the school and and I'm just very happy that I'm able to put together what I can with technology and and the the community as a whole from MCTS to to really make them shine and it all started with the prom uh, which was a lot of fun and and uh, doing the virtual prom last year was was great um, so from then on it was just what could we do more what could we what else can can happen so I'm very happy with with this and, and also very uh, proud of what our school's been doing. Really, really nice work. And yeah, this is this is like your time to shine, and you did it. You stepped up, and and you're you're making everything better for students, for teachers, for the whole school community uh, with all that you do. Not just your technology, um, but all of your many many skills. Mark, a huge improvement. You know, like you've always been solid. I mean, your your film editing background, your photography, your social media. Like, there's so many different hats that you're always putting on. But when the bottom dropped out with this pandemic, uh, you really embraced your skill set, like you indicated. And we can't thank you enough. And you've unlocked a lot of opportunity for a lot of staff members. And it, nobody deserves that award more so than you, Nick. And congratulations, sincerely. Yeah, uh, thank great. you. Mr. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Keep up the good work. Um, and on that happy note, I think we should get this episode rolling, Nash. What do you think? Heck yeah. All right. Heck yeah. We'll, we'll be right back. we got a great episode coming at you. We'll be right back with our Student of the Week. And now it's time for Student of the Week. All right, everybody. Welcome. We are very, very excited to have, we normally call it student of the week, this segment, but uh, guess what, Nash? We're doubling down in honor of the holiday season. We've got students of the week. There's two of them. Go big um, or go home, as they say. Go big or go home. That's exactly what we're saying as we're coming into uh, the end of the year, uh, end of the calendar year, not the school year. Please, uh, please uh, join me in welcoming Srushti Trivedi and Unesa Mir. Welcome, students. Hello. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having us. We're really glad you're here, too. So 
Nash, to begin with, these two are, are great students. That that goes without saying. Um, Home runs. They're also – Home runs. Absolutely. And the type of kids who step in and volunteer for stuff. But they've done something very special uh, with our guest day visits, which is one of the things I want to talk to them about. Um, you may know, Nash, that we have uh, – we have students come, eighth graders that might uh, apply to the Health Science Academy or the STEM Academy or the Culinary Arts Academy. They're encouraged to come visit and check it out. So, um, so Unesa and, and Srushti, tell us a little bit how you came up with this idea. I know that you worked with Mr. Sabar. I don't want to you. You take it away and tell us. Uh, Tell us exactly what you're what you're doing with these kids. Right, of course. This is actually a good thing to talk about today because we actually had three students come in today. Um, Trishti, if you wanted to talk about how they come into Mr. Savar's class first and what we set up afterward. Yeah. So every every B day, every B day, we I like open my computer and I go to my Google Meet and I see new students all the time with Mr. Savar. Mr. Savar pull, pulls up his um PowerPoint and we're talking about the skeletal system and stuff. And they're always there. They're listening. People have their cameras on. Um, they're so enthusiastic and stuff. And once we're done, like presentation, we go to a breakout group chat. Just we have even a, like an agenda, like just just for the students. I made we typed up an agenda. We're talking about like students we're talking about freshman year we're talking about uniforms we're talking about like blocks since we have 90 minute blocks it's not like the regular high school type of thing and um we're organized and we're talking and we're making jokes me and Unesa, like we make little jokes here and there to make them laugh you know um if i look presentable i'll like turn my camera on and like talk and stuff but usually it's it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to talk to like new people and like i always ask them about their homeschool i always ask them about like what's like what concerns they have and today we they brought up like some great questions like they talked about double periods today and like um having all these like transportation problems and stuff like they would bring up the fact that um homeschool itself like how is it different how is a regular school different than our academy and i mean when they would talk about our experience as a freshman like how how it feels like yesterday mm -hmm. like the juniors now like what <laughs> how did that happen outstanding right. so one of the main things oh i'm so sorry did i interrupt you no, no, I'm just, okay, I'm just, so uh, once we're, like, like Trishy said, where we start off in Mr. Sabar's room and he's, thank you, Mr. Sabar, if you're here listening to this, you do so much to set this up. Um, so we go into A&P and we're introduced to the, the new shadow students and he tells us, okay, go to this breakout room. So within the breakout room, we tend to ask for their emails in order to have a mode of communication with them in case we lose them during a meet, because the way uh, the meets are set up is that you have to go to a different meet every class, right? So, in, in if so, if a student, if a shadow student is lost in in the the way, like if we're going to a new one and they didn't know the link that was there, uh, we need a mode of communication for them to know to send them the link that they have to go to. So, what we do is we ask for their email in case we have to email them, and we also have a uh, a hangouts set up with them because one of the things that Google does is that if you sign into Gmail, in the bottom corner is a hangouts chat. So we set up a Hangouts group chat with all the students to set up uh, the meets and send them there if someone gets lost. And then we go to different blocks and then teach, show them the teachers. One of the main things that the, we often bring up is the fact that most teachers are both advisors for a club as well as has experience in their field of study. For instance, Mr. Agusa used to work as a vet tech. So if one of one of the shadow students today actually wanted to become a veterinarian, so she might she wanted to ask Mr. Agusa some questions. Um, Incredible. Yeah, interesting. Do you want to talk about like the fact that we explain the clubs to them? I heard I heard you use the term A and P. Now I happen to know that's a class, but some other listeners might think that's a grocery store from the seventies oh, and eighties. Wow. Definitely not a grocery store. It is um, <laughs> physiology. Um, we're in one because we're juniors. Next year, we're going to take anatomy and physiology too. It's body parts and how it works, functions and stuff. So yeah. Um, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we have I, great experience. We're we're having a lot of fun. I love how the I love how you guys do peer to peer. It, what when we talk to a lot of outside industry inter people, guidance counselors for homeschools, et cetera, the most powerful component that I think everybody's having that aha moment, which you two brilliantly had the aha moment is peer to peer is the strongest form of strengthening and gusseting on the middle school to high school, high school to high schooler, or, you know, collegiate to high school element that no adult 
can really do and complete. And I learned that very quickly, or if I know you did. So yeah. wow. I want- Sorry, but no, literally, when I was an eighth grader, I remember the sophomore helped me out. That's the whole reason why I was so comfortable with this kid. And I like, you know, I like learned so much just by following him around. I went right. to meet- just like Shruti oh. said, another thing is a lot of students that are coming to MCTS I often don't come with other people. Like uh, if they come in without any other middle schoolers that they know of, they are in a completely new environment without knowing anyone like in a friend group, right? So as Shruti said, she had the sophomore that she um, was talking to a lot. That's what we wanted to do to these shadow students so that they have someone they know within this new environment. Definitely. I love it. As as like, I can only imagine as a parent would be listening to this. It's all, it it is not almost, it is a junior college experience. You come out of (laughs) middle school and you get dumped in the hopper, not literally, but that's how it feels mentally. I'm assuming you guys tell us, and this is what I'm hearing. And have them uh, ra- older upperclassmen rally around these, and and like you're talking about, these kids are asking incredible questions. It just goes to show that it's MCTS's unconventional view of education that just allows these springboards. Exactly, that's that's what it is right there. I love it. I want to ask really quick. I just want to hear a little bit more about you guys. I know you have to get you have to get back to class in a minute, but um, um, Shrushti, uh and then Unesa, tell us. Uh, you going? Are you both applying to college? I assume. Yeah. Unesa? I am. Uh, I'm actually going to become an optometrist. It's almost like I have glasses on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very good. Where are you going, Unesa? What's your What's your number one pick? Uh, well, my hope is that actually I'm going to go to Mercer County Community College, which MCTS is affiliated with, and I'm going to transfer out into a bigger college later. And my brilliant is that I'm going to either Penn Medicine or U Sciences. So, save mom and dad some money. I love that. That's a wonderful exactly. idea. You and, have to, and with you the have credit, to be financially aware. <laughs> with the credits you've gotten from MCTS, you're like practically at an associate's degree already. So so I love that choice. I think it's a great idea. Um, how about you, Shruti? What are you what are you uh, what are you looking at so far? Unlike Unesa, um, I'm more on like the confused side. Um, <laughs> I had I start I wanted to become a surgeon when I first came to um, MCTS HSA. I was like I was into this show and I wanted to become a surgeon and stuff. I thought it was really cool, but then I realized the amount of work, the amount of years, and you know schooling and debt that I would have. You know how you didn't name drop the show? Yeah. <laughs> like we know what show it is, but you're not going to talk about it, huh? No. Um, so the amount of like stuff that I would have to put in had, I just like, it, it was, it seemed a lot. It seemed a lot of like, I was overwhelmed basically. So then sophomore year, I was like, you know what, maybe I'll look into like some other health career. Junior year comes around and I'm like, okay, engineering seems cool. So I'm each year I get confused and, um, I know I want to go to a good college though. Like I know MCTS is going to help me. Go ahead. I got I got a very useful, relevant. This is real life MCTS unscripted information that I can share with both of you, particularly you, Shruti. So uh, you guys know this. I made a, a video series to help everybody once we, we first entered this pandemic. And I compressed these topics that I always talk with guys and girls about. Doesn't matter whether it's STEM, HSA, culinary, share time, blue collar, white collar, entrepreneur. It didn't matter. These are the conversations I have as the career counselor for the district. Definitely check out uh, video number two, Shruti. There's two really powerful assessments from high-level companies, Gallup and Clifton. And the, the, the first two, and again, if you're listening to this and your son and daughter is oscillating, which is natural, normal, and okay, Shruti, you are part of a very high percentage of young guys and girls upwelling in high school that feel that, that pull, that draw to these different areas. So these two very quick assessments. You can watch the video. It explains them in depth. The first one's called Clifton Strengths for Students. And that's available. just Amazon, Google, whatever, 14 bucks. Come out, and it is not some rudimentary, cobbly sixth grade career finder. It is excellent. And the second one is an SDS, self-directed search, Dr. John Holland. Google it, run with it. Two useful components that will definitely springboard your trajectory to fulfillment and activation in a career field, not a job. Job stands for just over broke. Both of you already know that. So 
look at that, real life. Check it out, go for it. And please let me know how you make out. Email us, we'll do a follow-up. If, if they worked and helped you, great. And if not, they'll at least give you some perspective uh, that you can integrate into your resume or whatever area of career assistance you go into. Or if take it away. Yes. So just just uh, in closing, I want to say also uh, you you two are, are uh, incredible students, incredible people. Um, we're proud to have you as part of the MCTS family. So I want to say thank you uh, on behalf of everybody for all you've done for us, not not just with as student ambassadors and with the visits, but but uh, through the years. And we know you're going to have uh, great futures. Um, and with that, so I'm going to say and I'm sure. Like, I, I can't really say the same to you because you're not a student anymore, but I'm sure that uh, <laughs> you have like a great life. I, I do have a great life. I, I, uh, I, I love what I do and I, I love uh, getting to talk to talk to students like you. Especially and that's what we all aspire like to have to <laughs> hey, we have a career that we want to be in. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, absolutely. You, you guys are definitely on a trajectory. We we love helping all the different facets of MCTS and you guys know us well. I mean, it stinks with this whole pandemic thing, and we're going to get through this, but we're just privileged to be able to, to watch you guys germinate, activate, come alive. It's so cool to watch transformation. That's the thing. I think I learned a lot from my teachers. Like, the reason why I am how I am is because of the teachers. Um, I think they help us out so much, and, like, my personality, it just motivates me to to have, like, a great future and to, you know, to be confused all over again, but yeah, like honestly, awesome. it's awesome. we can't we can't wait to see we can't wait to see what's coming down the pike. You got to visit us. Three to five years, both of you got to come back. We're gonna do yeah. follow podcast follow up. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I know you both have to get back to class, so I, in closing, I will just say thank you. Keep up the great work, both of you. Uh, we're getting such good feedback from the students who do visit. Um, and with that, uh, I would like to say on behalf of all of MCTS and all our podcast listeners, uh, thank you very, very much to Unes Amir and Srushti Trivedi, your students of the week. Thank you. Thank you, and have a nice day, MCTS, and everyone who's listening to the podcast. We don't stop learning after the bell rings. Guess what? It's time for teacher tips. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your teacher tip this week comes to us from our SIPAC Center's beloved school social worker, the great Mr. Simic. Mr. Simic, take it away. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to take a moment and remind everyone to not forget about exercising during this winter season. Physical activity is not only good for your body, but it's also good for your brain. So take a walk, ride a bike, juggle a soccer ball, do something active. This is a great time to get into the best shape of your life. And remember, walking to the kitchen is not enough exercise. Stay well, stay safe. Hey, hey Simic, would you jump in the ocean right now? Recommend that. Of course I would. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding, Mr. Simic. Thank you very much for your teacher tip. Uh, right? Students, take heed. Yes, enjoy that and listen. And well done, sir. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, come here. Come here. Check it out. They're in our school. They're in our community. They're around the corner. Welcome, our featured guest. Welcome back, everybody. We are here with our featured guest, and I'm very, very excited to introduce him because not only is he our guest this week, but he is a uh, permanent fixture now in the MCTS family. Uh, please welcome me in joining. Please join me in welcoming our brand new uh, HVAC instructor, Trevor Geis. Hello, Trevor. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. We're glad to have you. I'm going to call you Mr. Geis for the rest of the uh, rest of the podcast. Or, or Nash has a nickname that he's already coined for you. I, I, I've, I've coined him the Geis Man because he is <laughs> solid. He is rock solid. Um, when he really shows dynamic. up to class, the students say, "The Geis Man cometh." Oh, I love it. <laughs> and it's actually, you know what? That's even more relatable. Do you know why, Mr. Orf and Mr. Geis? There's an HVAC business in Mercer County called the Iceman. And on the front of his yep. bus field is the Iceman cometh. So, yep. oh my gosh. No relation to oh Geis. No relation to Geis, though. <laughs> yeah, no relation. That's fantastic. Now we just have to get it's too bad your first name doesn't have to do something with heat. 
because then it would be like heat and Geis at the same time. Um, all right, enough of my yak. And Trevor, uh, tell us a little bit. Mr. Geis, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us your background. How did you come to us at MCTS? Okay, um, uh, the long and short of it is basically when I uh, graduated from high school, um, I did what most people do and just went to college. Uh, also, like most people, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, so uh, I actually started in education because I enjoyed uh, teaching people. That was my initial major. Um, but after a couple of years of not being sure where I wanted to go, I decided I was wasting my time and I left and I went into the military for four years. So um, and then once I got out of the military, I decided, oh, I should finish that college degree. Now I had benefits. So I went back to school and still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I got my business uh, degree thinking that was very general, which it turned out was too general. I ended up in sales and then eventually worked for an HVAC company as a salesman. Um, and then I rode around with the technicians. I saw what they were doing. I got to kind of get my hands on it a little bit, even though I wasn't supposed to at the time. And, <laughs> um, and then I just, uh, I just decided this is actually what I want to do. So I switched careers, went back to school at Lincoln Tech, um, and then uh, started working in the HVAC field as soon as I graduated. Um, Mr. And, then, Orf and Mr. Geis. I do not want to stop this flow because this is this is something that we would normally ever contain. Mr. Guys, you are the ultimate capture from a career standpoint. You have <laughs> yourself in all four areas that we teach our students, which is oh, yeah. trade-based employment, a career-based employment with upper mobility, trade school, military, as well as college. I've never met someone ever in 20 years in a district that did all four. Congratulations. Keep going. I don't want to stop the show. Here's, oh, thank here's you. Quadruple threat. Yeah, keep going, please, Mr. Geist. Oh, okay, absolutely. Um, so I guess I went to Lincoln, I went to Lincoln Tech, and while I was going to uh, Lincoln Tech, I, you know, uh I did pretty well uh, because I had changed my career. And at this point, I was dedicated to this new career I was gonna go into. So I paid attention, I did everything right, and I uh, ended up with a good uh average. So when I called around to different companies. Uh, that's what I did. That's how I got my first job in the field was I, I just looked up HVAC companies in the area and called them and asked if they were hiring and if I could give them my resume. And I got a bunch of interviews. Um, and then I got I got uh, four or five job offers out of like the 10 companies that I talked to um, at the time. Now, I did really well, of course, in the school. So I'm sure that helped. But um, then when when I was working, I loved it. But I got to train uh, other people as I as I grew in the business I did residential I did commercial I did industrial um, and as I grew in the business I got to train new new apprentices that would join up and I loved it and it reminded me of of my initial idea that I wanted to be a teacher uh, way back in college so I decided to look into how I could do that and a friend of mine uh, told me that that they do technical schools will allow an alternate route program so that's what I'm participating in now. So uh, I'm actually I'm very happy with where I'm at. I love the career and I also love teaching. So it's a, an excellent, I think, combination. <laughs> or I don't or I don't want to overstate you... this or put any pressure on you, Mr. Guys, but I cannot think of a person more qualified to come in and take over the reins of the HVAC program. Nash, what do you think? Or if, uh, I was just going to ask, did you did you have a DeLorean out front go back <laughs> Secretly engineer this guy. I mean, <laughs> on, dude. I never knew that story. I mean, and here's the neat part. Trevor and I have been working. You know, he's a newer guy. I, I, I love seeing people succeed. The programs are like fields that cultivate these amazing uh, uh, products and, and kids. And, and I just see that as such a metaphoric relation. And so Trevor and I have been working together extensively for two weeks on – resume creation activating guys and girls and i'm like man this guy really gets it well, well it's in, it's almost like you were engineered to be a phenomenal cte teacher i'm being wow, thank you i can't thank you enough for that that means a lot i mean having only nine weeks or so in uh as a teacher so far is uh, that's excellent to hear thank you very much <laughs> we're, or, we're hearing good good responses too uh, mr guys from from students and and uh and observers so keep up the good work oh Nash. thank you very much I just love the, the fact that you got commercial, you got residential, you got uh, institutionalized. I mean, if I was a parent listening to this, a guidance counselor, 
anyone that who has a glimmer of a person that wants to enter this field, you're talking about a smorgasbord buffet laid out in the classroom that from a perspective that you can't, uh, you can't teach this. Uh, he can because he lived it, but there's no way you're getting anybody else that can do this. I've seen it. I taught auto shop. I, I, I know what it's like. If, if, they're grinding it and doing it. You could learn all the theory in the world. You could learn all the teaching practices in the world. That doesn't make you an effective CTE teacher. And that's why I'm just so beyond excited. That, I mean, this isn't fake or if I, I'm, 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 I'm blown away. I'm blown away. Also, I just, I just thought of something else, Mr. Geis, you're, you're, so you're coming in. What a weird uh, time to come in as a, as a new teacher, as a new CTE teacher. So, so if you don't mind me asking, tell us, we get this question from parents a lot. How are you making this? How are you doing the hands-on thing? How is it accessible to these kids? Uh, that's a great question. And, um, and I think it's uh, both, it's a double-edged sword. It's a, it's a both a benefit that I started when I did and also a detriment. But um, the fact that I started 100% remote meant that I, I had to hit that ground run and I wanted to teach and, and I wanted to get, uh, and I didn't know anything else about uh, how to get them hands on. So I created, uh, you know, a couple ideas so far and obviously it's ever evolving, but basically what I'm doing is um, I have them in class uh, you know, each day. And then a couple days of the week, I'll at, at least I'll go into the school and do live demonstrations on the equipment, um, yeah. with, with constant questions and feedback while we're going through it. Uh, I'll teach a little bit of theory and then go out and show them something on the equipment and then teach a little theory and do a video and then teach a little theory and, and go back on the equipment. So that it's like this, uh, you know, back and forth, they get to absorb it a little bit better. Um, I wouldn't say it's a, a perfect program and it's ever evolving, but if we don't go back, um, you know, which is a possibility, obviously we hope not. Uh, we, we hope we go back into school, but if we, uh, if we don't, then I plan on uh, creating some kits that it's to send home to the students in Tupperware containers so that they can follow along with us. Um, you know, while we do it in, in, in here, because, you know, of course that hands-on is very important. That's what they're looking for. That's yeah. very, very, that's fantastic. And yes, all, not, not just you, Mr. Guys, but all of our teachers are blessed to be able to go into their own shops and do some of the, do some of the instruction, film themselves doing that. So that's, that's great. I love, I love that plan. Um, uh, it's my understanding your wife is a, is a teacher as well. Is that so? She is. She's a yeah. uh, second grade teacher in uh, the West Windsor Plainsboro district. <laughs> so, so, so you guys get to, so it's like a you get to talk shop. A little bit, point. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> her shop is uh, they're all the same. Uh, teaching is is teaching, but her shop the uh, the specific subject matter is is definitely a little bit different. Uh, <laughs> being second grade, but uh, she's, she's taught me quite right. a bit too. So. Excellent. Yeah, I bet. I bet she's got great tips for you on how to like how to differentiate instruction and classroom yeah. management for sure. Yeah, that's Definitely. wonderful. Excellent. Um, awesome. uh, and it's my understanding that your your kiddos uh, second year, uh, you take that uh, the students take that uh, universal uh, refrigerant handler uh, universal certification. Yes. So there is some uh, test prep going in going into this year, too. Right. Absolutely. That's um, that's the EPA certification that you're, you're talking there you about there. And that's yeah. the uh, uh, we it's required to handle and, and work with fr refrigerants, purchase them, all that. Uh, so that is the the primary certification that HVAC uh, workers are going to need. Uh, so we, even though we have several students and more and more as the year progresses that are out there working on our CIE program with Mr. Nash and oh, yeah. the field, um, you know, which is wonderful. They still come back one day a week to uh, to catch up on that EPA so that they can pass their EPA and, and get out there certified. Um, so we are doing that as well. Yes. Outstanding. I, I, I would say again, and I'm, I mean this with transparency and sincerity, the transition uh, between you and Mr. Warner, I mean, it has been relatively seamless. Uh, I've have a, a high, high percentage of seniors in CIE positions, we, with your guidance and assistance and help, uh, we've activated a new CIE site called Pine Environmental. It's over in Windsor. And uh, you have a student named Devin uh, working there. And this is just yep. the kind of offshoot companies that when somebody from the industry teaches our program, very similar to what Chef Engel, Chef Silverman, and now we have Chef Philipson, which little teaser, maybe that might be our next spotlight because that's a powerful 
in the MCPS <laughs> family we brought in. But I mean, that's the beauty of what we're seeing is I, I'm able to correlate with Mr. Geis because of his knowledge. And he worked in Mercer County. His pr- previous employer was in Mercer County. And uh, he's just got his finger on the pulse. And you want to talk about uh, avenues that automatically unlock for students entering their senior year to tread into the low end with the swimmies on. We don't let them drown, Dorf. We don't let them drown. Let them no tread way. into the low end. <laughs> And they come back to the home base every Monday. It, it really is an exciting program. And if parents, if you're listening to this, that's our target objective is to teachers like Mr. Geist to work with myself and my department to land that plane senior year. So your son and daughter engages in a career that they can build the next steps of their lives at 18 to 24. That's what we're doing here at MCTS. So it's just perfectly homogenizes into this really neat A plus B equals C objective. And Mr. Geist is a big part of how we're doing that in the HVAC program now. I couldn't agree more. Um, last question, Mr. Geist, any, any impressions of the, of the school overall, the students, something, uh, something that jumps out at you um, about. Uh, our students well, here? that's a great question too. Uh, first of all, my, my impression of the school, uh, I love it. I will say this, Lincoln Tech is an excellent technical school when I went there, but the, yeah. my, the shop that I get to teach in, that I'm blessed to teach in at this point, is uh, has more equipment in it than the entire Lincoln Tech HVAC program. So wow. uh, I was shocked and, and excited about that, as well as you know the support and the staff. Everybody I've met has been has been wonderful and helpful. Um, and then, as far as the students are concerned, I want to say the very first thing is they are troopers. They're getting through this this hard time. And despite having uh, the difficulty of of choosing a hands-on technical program and then not being able to do it hands-on in the shop has been, I'm sure, a a dramatic challenge for them. And they are they're working. I have my students in the in the class every day uh, showing up, uh, you know, uh, ready to work, uh, doing their best. And and I just want to say that's. That's really impressive, and I'm very proud of them, uh, and it's it's wonderful. So um, I'm looking forward to continue. Yeah, the kids have been great, and and that's that's fantastic, um, Mr. Geis. Uh, I can't thank you enough for joining us, not just joining us on the podcast today, but joining the MCTS family. Really glad to have you here. Um, I think we'll I think we'll let you get to the you got a virtual classroom full of kids coming in in just a few minutes, so um, we'll let you get back to it. But I want to say uh, welcome and uh, looking looking forward to many years of you uh, getting our students ready. Me too. Thank you so much for having me, and have a great day. Happy holidays, Mr. Geis, our featured guest and uh, new MCTS family member. Thank you. Thanks. Man, that felt good to be back in a full episode, Mr. Nash. I uh, I really, really had a nice time. I loved hearing from teachers and students uh, and you yourself, of course, as always. Give me your final thoughts, Nash. I, I, I really thought this was a power-packed episode, not because that we measure other episodes versus others, but each guest brought a punch. I mean, our featured guest, Mr. Geis, there's two amazing students for springboarding just how to eliminate the awkwardness of being the new person in a big school. I mean, that's just brilliant. And then, you know, we got a lot of exciting things on the horizon. So it's always a pleasure if we can get together and unlock the mysteries of MCTS and how this baby's moving forward. Absolutely. Uh, much, much deserved holiday break coming up for everybody. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Rest. Students, uh, if you're behind on some work, this is a great opportunity to get caught up on it. Otherwise, enjoy the break. And uh, uh, we want to wish everybody a wonderful holiday season. In closing, I want to extend congratulations again to our different educators of the year, uh, Ms. Rubino, Mr. Ragusa, Mr. Kovitz, uh, and the great Nick Sikowski. Congratulations once again. And a big thank you to Srushti Trivedi, Unesa Mir, um, our uh, teacher, uh, Trevor Geis, and uh, the beloved heart and soul of the Cypex Center, Mr. Simic. Um, thanks to, to all of those folks for joining us on this episode. And uh, a big thanks to uh, uh, my partner in crime, Mr. Nash. Mr. Nash. Happy it's, holidays. It's always a pleasure. Uh, happy holidays. And, and uh, it, I can't wait to see where 2021 takes us to. 
Here's to a great year coming up, 2021. Um, finally, on behalf, reminder, please uh, listen to us uh, on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. Share this podcast with a friend. Um, tell your friends, if you're a student listening to this or a parent, um, get those applications coming. Classes are filling up fast, so please go to our website, mcts.edu, and apply immediately. Um, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and um, get involved in our school. Check out the Principal's Office podcast, also produced by uh, uh, Mr. Sikowski with our principals on there. And finally, in closing, on behalf of myself, the great David Nash, and behind the mic, uh, Nick MacGyver Sikowski, we'd like to say, discover your passion. And unlock your future! <laughs> <laughs>